Eric Smith here, and I'm very excited about our Pioneer Museum as we take you on our virtual tour. And inside, we have, again, a very special docent, Frida. So come on board. Hello, everyone. Well, hello, it's nice Frida. Nice to see you today. Good to see you. And we are at the Pioneer Museum on right. Montgomery Street at the moment. We have a total of five, count them, five museums in Oroville regarding what's going on here. And that's just city owned. We have one other in from the county. And um, I'm just gonna leave these here for you and little pamphlets from each one. Super, well, we're real excited about this, well, the opportunity a, to see this place. And I, you were sharing earlier, this was actually uh, built as a museum and a meeting place here yes, in Orville. it was. The, they had a very active and very busy group of people that uh, came together to build this and uh, and this was the site of an old flour mill close to it and so this property came up and bingo they decided to be here when you come in and you take a look if we if we step down these little wooden stairs we can see a few things that are very interesting do you want to do that first absolutely let's, let's come on come on down yeah, yeah. we're gonna okay. jump right in here all right We'll make a fast little go of it. We'll review what we do have here. We do have some antique weapons. None of them works. So I don't know anybody get any ideas. But there's a lot of, uh, a lot of really beautiful weaponry here. And uh, it's valuable to have that. You know, just doing a little reading about ore mill and our origin. Mm -hmm. So, uh, of course, it was the gold rush era, mm -hmm. and we have some uh, intriguing pieces back mm -hmm. here to talk about. But 1854 was originally Ofer yes. before it became yes. Oreville, and then Oreville incorporated in 1906, mm -hmm. which is a famous date for San Francisco. Famous date, yes. Right? yes. And you know, a lot of people don't know we had electric train from Oreville to San Francisco. We did, and, and yeah. we had we had trains that went back and forth to Chico as well, and Chico. Of course, about their university, and so um, you know, Butte County was really an amazing place. We, we, we were, we are, we are an amazing. Place. And still <laughs> are. Yes, some of the things that I'd like to draw your attention to is that gambling was a very big deal in the early days. By the time the ladies came along, things kind of settled down, but when the men were on their own, they were they gambled. They fought over their gold, they weighed their gold, they watched to see how much went down between the beams on the table. And uh, we had a lot of gambling going on here. Uh, you can see the sign here for mining implements, the shooting vest and that talks about some of those smaller replicas of sluices and whatnot. And here is more mining implements and the, the biggest one that we see about, of course, uh, or the most used was the common gold pan and a pick. And they could move big rocks with that uh, pick and find gold underneath and that. And you will still see, uh, there's a, a show on mining here in uh, locally, and uh, you can actually see them still getting gold out yeah. of these rivers in the same way. Yeah. You know what gets me excited is that 54 pound replica. Mm -hmm. Yes. One of the largest mm -hmm. gold nuggets ever found right here in our area, which is right. Dogtown, I think. Uh, That's right. AKA um, Paradise, right? Paradise. But Paradise. I was doing a little bit of math, you know, 54 pounds, that would be uh, over a million and a half dollars. It would be, wouldn't it? I think back then it was, what did they say, $10,000. Uh, uh, and 10,000 then was a fortune, yeah. a huge fortune. There's my uh, there's uh, weighing implements and dredgers. Uh, you know, as things got more important, we had a lot of dredgers along the, the road here, and that became our levee. That was the beginning of our levee. You could see that building over the many years they were mining. There are pictures. This is very personal. There's a lot of different people that are featured on this wall. One of the things I like to point out was that. Uh, one of the miners made a gold needle for his wife, and it is in that little frame, and it is a one-of-a-kind item, and getting needles and sewing implements and things like that was a real trick back in the day. But it wasn't like it is, you send something UPS and it arrives in a day. And so there's in interesting information in here about the Bidwell Bridge, you can see things like the lost case of H. Burt, first used Big Bar in the early 1850s. He was a lawyer. 
and uh, replica. That's a real piece, not a replica of wallpaper. That we and then, of course, the big wall of our bridge is still uh, still there. Still there. We mm-hmm. have it uh, up uh, up by the visitor center yes, we by the lake now. And it, and it's as beautiful as it was. Uh, musical instruments were quite a thing back in the day. Usually, we see in movies we see a guitar, but fiddling was a big deal, and uh, and fiddlers could play music loudly enough and fast enough to have dances. And when they when they didn't have the ladies, the gentlemen danced together. That was interesting, I betcha. So uh, that all those names up there, now what's that for us? Yes, these are names of contributors to the building of this, the beginning stages of this museum. And there are, there are names that as you come, you'll see uh, the larger parts of the plaques are for more money donated and whatnot. If you go back in the books, you'll see uh, lots of names of people who have come and gone, but many, many, many have stayed and their families survived. Yeah, and you know, that brings me back to the conversation about docents, which you're mm-hmm. a docent here in Oroville. And mm-hmm. so we're so appreciative of you, you know, holding such a cherished treasure of our history and how, how, how it began. You, we were talking about a book you're working on mm-hmm. a lot now. Mm-hmm. And it, it, well, I just want to reach out to you if you're here locally in Orville and you want to become a part of our DOSA program to continue on, uh, you know, the history and to maintain, you know, all of this treasure. Uh, certainly we'd like you to Absolutely. You know, join in. People the, are very welcome. And there's a variety of things you can do as a DOSA. You don't have to meet and greet everybody and tour them through a museum. There are lots of things that, that can be done. We put on an annual um, tea around uh, Thanksgiving time at the lot home, and then uh, and that money goes into this. And it's free. People donate, and the, the money that is uh, donated then goes into the fund for the for the homes. Yeah, there's a lot of maintenance just in keeping all of these treasured uh, mm-hmm. antiques. And, you know, we, we used to have a curator, I guess, in the uh, city when we for had some challenge time. times, you know, not yeah. able to do that. But, you know, so there's just a lot of things that go into maintaining these There it is. And, and the, the docents do everything from sweeping floors to polishing furniture and, and the, the uh, staff that comes in Park staff, they're responsible not just for these buildings, but for the yards and the, and the uh, gardens that surround the, the museums and all the other parks that are in Oroville. We have quite a number. You'll see some organs here and pianos that are very interesting. And they're playable, although we don't advise that. We hope that people will honor that, uh, that uh, um, don't let your kids tinkle, tinkle on that. Uh-huh. Boy, I, I love some of these uh, old weapons and the swords. My son likes swords. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he got involved in HEMA, historic uh, oh. uh, martial arts, yeah. So, well, he that's something you can watch on YouTube. That. On YouTube. <laughs> that's what it's like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, he likes that stuff. It's very, it's, uh, this is a fascinating place. Uh-huh. This one built uh, as if it were a home. Big, big fireplace that you see in here have to heat a lot in the winter because being stone is very cold and you have to have a nice big fireplace for that. And, and almost all early on, almost all of the fabrics and whatnot came on a loom. They wow. started out as just thread that the individual housewife was either able to buy mm-hmm. or to make. Now we just go to Marshalls, Ross, Walmart, you know, or yes, and order it online. Right, <laughs> and we buy a lot of our clothes ready made, yeah. unless we get a pint of the fashion, and then we get one of the pints. Right. So they have a they have a Santa Claus Day here that I was privileged to be at for a while this last Christmas. And uh, Santa was just wonderful. The kids just loved him. And uh, he sat right in here. Somebody played piano off and on. And we just had a nice time. The docents bring cookies and punch and things like that. It's a nice little social. Yeah, and so talking about Santa Claus, we have some toys from the era as well over here. Pardon? The toys. Oh, yeah. I was just thinking of Santa, I'm thinking of toys. And there's uh, some toys for the children. Real little school desk. And I do mean little, I guess this would be for first or second graders. 
and uh, but there are toys of different eras in here. There are some of Cornelia's dolls in here and some of the little tools to make doll clothes and whatnot. Cornelia Lot being from the Lot home. So you and she was part of that group that started developing this museum group. And uh, and they and she and, and her husband Jesse donated toward this building. Well, well we're, we're gonna go on upstairs and uh, we'll see some and see you there's lots to see in this place. You do. This is the greeting area. People sign in and pay their small fee to come in, and and uh, we have pictures of various. There's a lot of artwork that goes unnoticed in museums because we're so taken with all the artifacts. And there are some pieces of artwork that is the Bidwell Mansion, as a matter of fact, from the old days. Wow. And this is this is a uh, yoke from from uh, what the gigantic oxen used to be uh, tethered to one another and then they would haul logs out before trucks were available. There's a library here where you can purchase books that tell you about the various ways of life, kind of in the midst of, of uh, doing some work here. And all of our museums have little tokens that you can purchase things that you can so you, you can get a black help. bark t-shirt. Huh? You can get a black bark. So, we you do know, have a case that black bark is claimed to be to own. So a strong box that supposedly brought from a Wells Fargo yeah. uh, coach, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's if I remember, it's back the over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, infamous outlaw here yeah. in Orville. Very, uh -huh. very interesting story. Well, what they did when they when they added on and they built this was to show some of the ways that people lived and what implements they used and the clothing that they wore. This particular one is of a kitchen. Lots of implements for cutting up big pieces of beef, uh, making flour and uh, actually making it, and making bread. I can't imagine having to make your own flour to make bread, but they did it all the time. There's jewelry and handbags and whatnot. Charming sewing machines. Look at this tiny one. That's so interesting. And then there are little books, more art. This is fashion. This is a sewing room. Uh, built as a sewing room. And you would go and, and there would be always somebody that knew how to sew. And eventually they came up with machines to do some of the sewing. And you can see one of the oldest there. And uh, there are implements here. Uh, for, for quite a while, it was the rage to make art from your hair. And there are pieces at the lot home. I don't think there's anything at the bolt about that, but that's an interesting place to visit. These pieces are of hair, all of these. And this would be a poster that you could pick what your clothes would look like when you got them done. And uh, and of course they weren't always as fashionable as this lovely pink item here. Uh, you know what they say, hair today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> they you know, well, say. That one's out, yeah. No more fashion for making <laughs> no, the things no. with your hair. And this is from the room of uh, Mrs. Minnie Brazelton Fahey. And it was in her garden, in her home at Garden Ranch. And this is family portraits. And this, they just took it all up, even the wallpaper, took wow. the whole board and everything, lantern, all of it. Some beautiful old clocks. They're just, they're just, just amazing things here. These old sewing machines. This is called McLaughlin's Wall. These pictures here. Some of these are paintings, and some of these are enlarged photographs. Um, the wall from the Feather River. That's when the it river was, ran wild. It did run wild, yeah. and boy, did it just. Mm -hmm. In fact, we had some mm -hmm. pretty big floods here. We did have floods. Before the lake and the dam. And of course, we've had some, dam. unfortunately, since then, but yes, not, not like it was in the day yeah. before the flood. It really wiped out the gold business down there, and that was huge at that time. 
You know, one thing we didn't cover was that there was also a diamond mine at the Table Mountain. There and was. Yeah. We haven't talked about no, that. No, no. And Thomas he Edison, I guess, was Thomas involved Edison's with that uh, investment. He so, was an investor here. Yeah. So a lot of interesting history and different uh, individuals in our mm -hmm. past. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Lots of different uh, items in this. Watches and suspenders and things like that. Walking sticks and... This uh, this is not, I don't believe, I think this is a new acquisition, the piece on top. That is really interesting. Then we have a we have quite a nice selection of hats for everyday, for opera, for dress up, for pretending to be a cowboy. A few ladies hats in there. This is uh, this is a portrait which outla outlines the photographer, and, uh, and the portrait is called the picture is called "Attacked by Apaches," and he was stopped somewhere. And they came and they ended up taking pictures of the Apaches people. There's the story of it here, and. Um, and now down in this, in this case, is China and fancy dishes for having parties and whatnot. And back in the day, this was one of the way you entertained. Mm -hmm. You didn't set up your video and show it off. You put your China out there and yes. had a long meal. Now, this is set up and this is for the owner's furniture, as far as I know. From the lot home. From the lot home. Okay. Yes. Sewing machine, and this is kind of how an all-in-one room would be. You know how we are today. We we have a room for everything in some of our homes, and fortunately, we are able to do some of that. But sometimes that wasn't the case, and so they had treasures that they kept in their their uh, sleeping quarters. Now these are uh, baskets donated. This is this one is called the Sexton Collection, and I've curated this recently. So, these these are original baskets made by some local Native Americans, and they're all. Yeah, the basket weaving. If I understand what that might do, uh, okay. that it was so amazing that they would hold water. Oh yes, uh, and know, these little the tiny look that little those little tiny. Mm -hmm. You can see that all of this. You have the four or five little tiny baskets. And look how close the weaves are on these big ones. Yeah, Some amazing. of these are water carriers. Some of those mm -hmm. are like fishing baskets. And then then we go. There are more baskets in the downtown, in the downstairs collection. Uh -huh. So it's well worth coming to see the special artwork done by Native Americans. Just amazing. And um, here are, there are some uh, other interesting pieces. There are big dictionaries, large pictures of people. There's uh, reading books and encyclopedias in the back. That piano harp is a valuable piece. Well, practically everything here is valuable. And this mirror was originally in the lot home. Uh -huh. and, it, and it came here. So... Uh, there's an interesting story that someday you may want to find out when you come and visit about how this one appeared and there's another one in the, in the uh, lot home. So there's lots of different things to see as you wander through. This is a, a section on photography, picture of the gold spike that finished the oh, yeah. railway. Yeah. All those people actually came. That was taken from a picture that was taken. As you see, there's a copy of it next door to that. Imagine bringing all of your big camera equipment to do this kind of thing. Now, we have it in a phone. In a phone. Yep. Take a great picture. Things have changed just yes, a bit. Yes, they have. And counting skills done for chains. This is one chain, two chain, two chain. You'll see that in some movies of the day. We were uh, featured in one of the um, uh, nationwide fairs that were given in, I think, in San Francisco, some in New York, some others. There are some of the pieces that were taken back 
to take a look at what Oroville was about. Yeah, I know we had big, the big citrus uh, expedition. We uh, did. The expo here in yes. Oroville back in the Huge. day. I think it's back in the municipal it's auditorium beautiful. where it's at. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. some amazing history. And these are the these are the awards that were given during that period mm -hmm. of time, 1900. So if we move on down the way a little bit, we'll see some other things. And on the wall here are some, uh, some of the pieces of that California State Citrus Fair order oh, in January 1890. Uh -huh. So these are old photos, and I've seen them in old books, and so they have explanations. And a mansion building only of fruit. These kinds of booths where you, and they had hundreds of people come through the building or turning to them. Now I understand that our olive and citrus industry was uh, some of the largest, uh, really, not just in the country, but uh, worldwide. Oh, yes. Well, yeah, right here in Oregon. Yes. Frida Eamon started a, a business there when her husband died, and she used to make olives just for home consumption, and then the next thing you know, she had to develop something to take care of her family. Yeah. So we have another museum, our county museum, uh, dedicated to her and the things that she did, and it's quite lovely. You can see that in downtown Orville as well. Uh -huh. But um, these pictures were quite amazing. When you look at them, uh, you see the sheen and the shine and, and how gorgeous it was. And There's a picture of one of the books that you can see, a huge line of people. There is a picture of the original oak tree that split was the biggest. Robin Hood was made here in Oroville. That's right. We had the film industry yeah, here as well. Some we famous did. movies were made here. We did. Here. They yeah. were. Mm -hmm. So you can see there's more boots and boot jacks and lots of things here that are spike looking. And I don't know exactly what they were used for, but I think there's stories with them. This is a new acquisition, the scale. But these cards are cards from flour mills and telegraphs and bills and whatnot. They're very interesting if you take the time to look and read what they said. And sometimes that handwriting is pretty fancy and uh, hard to read. Yeah, you know, it's funny about handwriting. A lot of they're not teaching our children anymore how to write no, cursive. No, no, they're no. not. It's, like, it's almost like a lost art form. Yes, and it will come back someday uh -huh. when people recognize that it's. I mean, how can you make a signature of, of alphabetical? Wow, right. Like on a computer? Right? With a mouse. Yeah, I guess you can. <laughs> Not, so much. Not yeah. so much. Mine doesn't look too good with the mouse. Well, this is a typical little bedroom of a little girl, and lots of times if they had a fairly big family, two, two kids to a bed. And um, there's sleeping clothes and socks and sh and. I think there's a few pairs of shoes around here somewhere, and some of the toys that kids would use back in the day. And these would be children that would be in in homes uh, beyond the size of a cabin. This is uh, drugs and medicines that the pharmacy would have. And uh, it's not like you you could go in today and ask for your prescription. And they'll have it all fixed for you, and it will come in pill fashion. Now it's, and this time, it was a different thing. So the pharmacist would actually have to make? They would have to make the prescription for you. Doctor would tell them what you needed, and they would make something for you, whether it would be a pill or a capsule or a powder that you would have to give. I remember my mom telling me how old I am, but uh, I remember my mom giving me something that was like a syrup in a bottle, uh -huh. and it made me sleep real quick. So I know that an elixir of sorts. Yeah. yeah, something interesting. And here are handcuffs and other things, and um, for the law to use, gun holsters. That's a mighty large handcuffs right there. That would be for feet, oh, okay. legs, so you couldn't run very far. This is the, the box, the Wells Fargo Express box. And it was taken from Quincy Oroville stage near Berry Creek, California by Black Bob. There and it is. The and then there's a picture of it. Uh -huh. And then the paper. And this is a drawing I don't know where that came from or who did. But I don't think Black Bart looked like that, but that's an imaginative 
and imaginative. He, because the stories that you read now, uh-huh. he was quite the dresser. He would come full suited to rob you. Well, at least he did it inside. He did it inside. <laughs> and this is the assayer's office and a lawyer's office. There's a lot of very interesting things in here. I've been detailing some of those. Um, you might want to get a close-up of this little Corona typewriter. That would be one of the original portables. You know, talking about being old enough, I, mm-hmm. I'm old enough to remember writing po- college term uh-huh. papers on, on things the, like that. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, not quite one that old, but mechanical nevertheless. Just a little bit before computers. Yeah, right. Oh, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. So then we're not going to go downstairs, but there is an entire downstairs that has a lot more that you can see, including a a fire truck of the day and horse, a horse driven, real horse, not a horse power. Yeah, 1850s, 1856. And they are beautiful. And there are military uniforms. Lots of our men, you know, went off to battle. Every war that could be done, lots of our men would go to, and that would be maybe nationwide. But um, there are pictures in some of our books of lines and lines and lines, endless lines, and local soldiers getting ready to go. Then the other thing for you that I, uh-huh. that's interesting is that printing press down there, too. Oh, yes. How it was actually done back in the day. That's oh, a yeah. fascinating piece Page well. by page. Yeah, unbelievable. Letter by letter. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's a real mm-hmm. fascinating piece. Like you said, the fire apparatuses that are down there. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's just so much to see down below. Uh, but this has been really fascinating. Okay. I appreciate you taking some time, and I hope that you've enjoyed this virtually here at the Pioneer Museum. And again, just a shout out for those of you that have a love of history and want to be one of those preservers of uh, you know, just amazing history that we mm-hmm. possess here in Oroville, California. What a wonderful treasure. And you're, this has been such a delight and we just appreciate you. Thank you very much. And it's been wonderful to Looking, us. looking yeah, forward to having great. your book coming yeah. out. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Well, thank you for watching. And I hope that you uh, get on board and see some of the other tours that we're going to have with some of the other museums. Thank you.